Hey everyone, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a custom dynamic thank you page after a user submits a form. First, I recommend you check out this video right here I created last year called uh, Contact Form Redirect to Thank You Page. I'll leave a link to this video in the description below and I'll also throw a card up here so you can just click that. Uh, this is gonna walk you through step-by-step -step on how to get a user to redirect to a thank you page or any page after they submit a form. This will keep this tutorial a little bit shorter and we can get straight to the point. This was a good tutorial because it forwarded you to a static thank you page. But in this tutorial, I wanna show you how to create something like this, where after the user submits a form, you can highlight their name and their email right here. To follow this tutorial, you will need Elementor Pro because this is an Elementor Pro feature called Dynamic Request Parameter. It sounds scary, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step on how to pull this off right here really easily. Let's just jump right into it. First, we need to understand what's happening so we can get a better idea of how to set this up in the back end. So once a user submits this form right here, we wanna have it where they redirect to this page, that's simple enough, but then how do we get these values from here and here to display on the front end? Uh, it's real easy, actually. So if you look right up here, I'm gonna zoom in, you see where it says question mark, form name equals my name, Mark Crowell, and form email equals mark at Wikidesign. So that right there is a URL parameter. And so what happens is you need to be able to store this information in between pages. So when someone's on the contact page, you need a way to store this information to pass it along to the thank you page. And so that's what this request parameter does. It just pulls that information from the form and puts it in the URL and then with that setting, it will display it right here. So it's not as complicated as what it sounds. You're basically just taking values from here, transferring it in between two different pages and just displaying that data. That's it. So that information is never going to a database or anything like that. It's all just staying right within the browser. Now I'm going to show you how to set that all up. Here we are on the contact form page. And what we need to do in this step is grab the two short codes that we need right here and then we're gonna be able to customize our thank you page. So it will look like this when a user submits the form. So what we need to do is in this case, we're just gonna pass the variables from name and email to the thank you page. So we need to grab the two short codes for these fields. And to do that, you go into the fields. And if you go under the field name advanced, you're gonna to wanna to type in something custom here. So in this case, I just called it form name. And then here's the short code. So what I recommend is copying the short code to a clipboard because we're going to paste it in the next section. So same thing under email, you're going to want to go to advanced. And in this case, I just called it form email. And then that creates this short code right here. The next step is we need to create that custom thank you URL. And if you're not familiar with how this works in Elementor, um, the good thing about it is when you add your redirect underneath the actions after submit, you're not limited to just one action. You, so in this case, if you wanted to have it where it will send an email to the admin, um, you can do that. You can also do the redirect, so you can stack multiple things. The next step we need to do is add those two short codes into the redirect URL. The first thing we need to do is enter in the thank you page first. So in this example, we have it at wikidemo.com slash testing slash thank you. That's what this page is right here. Now we need to add this special string right here to make this work correctly on this page. And the only thing that we need to add is after the slash, you just add question mark, form name equals, and then here's your very first short code. So I recommend keeping it, like I said, very unique to this. So this is form name, this is form email. So we need to make it say form name equals that short code. And then whenever you have multiple URL parameters, you need to add the and symbol right here, form email equals this short code right here. That's all we have to do on this page. So once you do that, you just hit update. Now we're gonna move on to customizing the thank you page to pull in those variables. Here we are on the back end of the thank you page right here. And let's go ahead and pull in a heading first. So this is just gonna pull in the information right here. So when someone submits name, we just want it have their name show up first. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna add the text before and after and also a fallback text. So let's go ahead and when you pull that heading in, you're gonna to wanna to click this button right here, dynamic tags. If you scroll down to request parameter, this is gonna pull in the parameter from here and display it right here. 
So by default, nothing's ever going to show up in the browser on the back end because there's no parameter to pull in. So you're going to want to make sure that you click that again and just keep the word at git. And now we need to pull in form name. So that's originally the form name right here. So that's what we call the ID. So if we just go ahead, hit update, and let me do another contact form submission. So let me go here, just type in my name, Mark Crowell, Mark at Wiki Design. And I'm just gonna throw a test down here. We're gonna redirect, and there you go. So it pulled in my name right here. So let's go ahead and do some styling to this and add the text before and after, and then I'm gonna show you how you can do a fallback text as well. So if you go right here, we're gonna to wanna to center that first because it was off to the left. And let's go ahead and add a fallback text first. So if you go into here, when you click on request parameter, if you click on advanced, you have the option to add text before the parameter, after, and then a fallback. So let's do a fallback first. So what a fallback means is if somebody submits, I'll take this out right here. If someone submits the form and it doesn't submit correctly or they have it blocked or anything along those lines, it will go back to the fallback text so it can at least display something. So if I go here, hit refresh, it's gonna pull in that text I just brought in called thank you for reaching out. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a fallback text just in case the parameter doesn't pass for some reason, at least you wanna show something. So now we can just go ahead on the before, add thank you, space, and then you can do another space here for reaching out, something like that. So now that's gonna say thank you, your name, space for reaching out. So let's go ahead and hit update. Let's go here, let's do another form submission. Say Mark Crowell, Mark at Wiki Design. Test, and now it should say, thank you, Mark Crowell, for reaching out. So there you go. And you can see in the URL, we have it, question mark, form name equals Mark plus Crowell. So URLs can't have spaces, so that's why you're gonna see a plus. Now let's go ahead and add the email below it and say thank you for reaching out or responding within two days or something like that. So what we can do is pull in a regular text editor below it and very similar process. We're gonna to wanna to click this button right here, dynamic tags, scroll down to request parameter. Same thing, we're gonna to wanna to do git and instead of name this time, it's form email. And let's go ahead and add this fallback text this one just says, we will email you within two business days. Let's go ahead into the settings, center that. And let's go back into here, advanced, and say, we will email you at, so we will email you at, and I, you can put like a parentheses for the before and then after and under parentheses within two business days. Let's go ahead, hit update. And as a pro tip, if you have your form already submitted with the URL parameter up here like this, you don't have to go back to the contact form and retest it. If you have this up here, you could just hit refresh. And you see right there, it's gonna pull that information. So you don't have to do the contact form every time. So this is working perfectly. We have thank you, Mark Rowell, for reaching out. We will email you at Mark at Wiki Design within two business days, perfect. And like I said, let's go ahead and see what it looks like when there's no parameters, make sure that works correctly. Thank you for reaching out. We will email you within two business days. Perfect. And if you're already creating a custom thank you page, you might as well add some other call to actions on this page. So here's an example. You can have a link to your YouTube channel here. You can add some blog feeds down here. You can do a lot here. And the great thing about this request parameter is you're not limited to just text. So for example, if you wanted to pull in a button that pulled in a name or something like that, you can do that as well. Pretty much anywhere that that dynamic tag is gonna show up, you can add that request parameter. So let's just throw in a button here, center it, and I'm just gonna show you a quick example. So you can go down here. So instead of the text being clicked here, you can do request parameter. Click that again, let's just do form name and just hit update. So now if we go back to the page, the button should say my name inside the text. So as you can see, you can add this request parameter to a lot of different parts of your website. And that's it for this video. Make sure that you give it a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new Elementor tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.